Hello, this is Haku Devine, and I am here with part 2 of the End of Death canon. This is going to be yet another SCP document relating to with the, a canon and an event wherein in death and all forms of it have been and deleted from exist from being possible. That means that no human and or any other life form on the planet can die. Anyway, let's begin. This is SCP-3984. The library is warm and dark. Outside it is a summer night. Warmth and humidity linger in the air from earlier in the day. A storm is predicted for the week ahead, but the sky is clear for now. The library has been closed for several hours. You shut the front door quietly behind you and make your way out to, of the foyer. The floor is several is a, is a carpet, soft and thick, muffling each of your footsteps for you. The collective gaze of several security cameras is trained upon the door, but for tonight, they are blind. A wooden door leads from the foyer into the library proper. Swings open smoothly without so much as a groan. On any other night, it would creak loudly. You move deeper into the library. A stray book lies on the floor or shroud in the darkness. Your foot hits it. You trip. Not enough to fall, but enough to throw you off your balance. You reach out and grab a bookshelf. Your hand, touching for a place to grasp, Hits another herb book and sends it falling to the floor, where it hits the carpet with a thud that echoes all out around the room. You freeze. The echo fades. The library returns to silence. If someone were here, they definitely would have noticed that. You decide that you are alone and continue walking normally now. You arrive at the librarian's desk. Climb over it. Take a seat at one of the two computers and boot it on. I mean, and boot it up. The login problem appears. You withdraw a notebook from your pocket and enter the details on the first page. The login is successful. The rest of the notebook is filled with instructions, combinations of buttons to press, commands to enter. You open two different terminals, enter a series of commands, watch lines of text you don't understand to flicker past your eyes. Eventually, as the notebook demands, you take a USB drive from your pocket and gently push it into the computer. The screen goes black as it thinks about what it needs to do. A long, tense moment passes. The file for SCP-3984 lights up the room as the page loads, burning your eyes that have grown used to the darkness. You wince and blink and wait for your eyes to adjust. You accept a relief that the instructions you were given worked out, but it's a feeling that you cut short. You're here to solve a mystery that you've lived with your entire life. A mystery that no one else seems to want to solve or even acknowledge. A mystery that's been around for 24 years. And you hope, you have to hope, that this file will hold at least some answers. It's the only place left to look. But I'll begin with enough from the researchers. Read from the top seems like a good way to start. For that. If you made it this far, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below. Anyway, let's continue. Dr. Nanasu, all personnel. Omega K is a thing. It's happened. We all have to live with it now. Despite speculation, no matter how prevalent that speculation is, we do not know for sure. Whether or not we cause Mega K, whether any of our SCPs cause it, or whether any of them can fix it. We do not uh, know whether it is related to the Foundation at all. What we do know is that it now defines our lives. The SCP Foundation does not destroy anomalies, it contains them. That is our purpose. A Mega K a is an anomaly and we will contain it. We will not end it, we will not put things back as certain individuals are asking. That is not our purpose. That is, is not our, our bot at all. However, we will contain it, or at least try to. 
So if any of you are expecting my research team to come up with some magical solution to an omega K, stop expecting that. We will treat the symptoms, but not cure the disease. Omega K is here, and it's not going away. So grow up and move on. You're professionals. Act like it. It's not like this is going to kill you. Dr. Emily Young. Yes, I gave her a Karen voice. She deserves it. You'll see. <sighs> Dr. Emily Young, a name you've been trying to avoid for the past 24 years. You met Young last year, and suffice to say in that she is of little use for research purposes. You'll get no benefit from talking to her. This document really is the last place you can look. SCP-3984 Item number SCP-3984. Also, this is also known as the end of death. Object class Keter. Special containment and procedures. Containment of SCP-3984 revolves around inducing death in affected animals. As this is not currently possible, SCP-3984 can be considered uncontained. Research efforts must be directed into the development of alternative methods of inducing death. Research into reversing the effects of Omega K or its origin is prohibited. Prohibited? Unusual. What was Young up to? Description SCP 3984 refers to a phenomenon in which any living organism in the kingdom Animalia under or Cavalier Sith attacks on me. Gamma Kingdom includes all animals, but not bacteria, fungi, algae, or plants. Are unable to die. Currently, all known life forms in the animal in the kingdom Animalia are under the effects of 3984. This satisfies the criteria of of an for or an omega class end of death scenario. The source or origin of the prevalence of SCP-3984 as such is referred to omega K. The exact nature of Omega K is currently under debate. This document pertains only to SCP-3984 and its effects, not its origin. Omega K occurred on September or twelfth, twenty twenty, at approximately fourteen o two GMT. A time which has been derived from the last globally recorded human death. Since that time, SCP-3984 has been present in every living cr creature thus tested. As a result, mortality rates have dropped to zero. SCP-3984 does appears to only extend to the ability to die. SCP-3984 does not grant a healing effect, does not prevent aging, does not prevent conception or pregnancy, and does not prevent subjects from sustaining injury. In the long term, SCP-3984 presents a major threat to societal structures as the population is expected to expand exponentially. Currently, modules estimate that overpopulation would begin to lead to excessive scarcity to the point of widespread, of widespread starvation in the early 2040s. Additionally, while population growth is a considerable concern for humans in the long term, a much larger short-term concern is presented by animals with, with our selected evolutionary strategies. Animals living in an unstable environment are generally characterized by an our selected evolutionary strategy which consists of producing many cheap offspring of which few are expected to survive, compared to case-selected evolutionary strategy which consists it consists of producing a single, more expensive offspring, which is expected to ex survive for the maximum lifespan of its species. Worldwide efforts should be focused on generating efficient resources for the plant to be able to cope with the increased population. Talks with governments around the world to determine strategies for managing population growth. 
for both humans and animals is underway. The Foundation effort should be focused on the development of alternative and or artificial solutions to replace death. The extent to which SCP-3984 constitutes conventional immortality, for example, does it prevent aging and injury, is there a healing factor, or does it simply remove NSA aliens ability to kill? This is a subject of ongoing research, which is led by Dr. Young as per request. Experimental logs and a theory on the mechanism of SCP-3984 is presented below. Experiment Log 1 Date September 14th, 2020 Experimenter Dr. Emily Young Subject D1190 Procedure D1190 was as fixated by manual regulation from MD99 and 81 Results D1190 struggled initially, but stopped resisting after several minutes of strangulation. D9981 was told to maintain a grip for a further 10 minutes. D1190 recovered shortly afterwards with no lasting damage. Experiment Log 2 same date as before, same experimenter, Dr. Emily Young, as before. Subject, D6812. D6812 was asphyxiated by D9981 tying a belt around his neck. Results, D6812 initially resisted asphyxiation despite instruction and otherwise, but stopped after several minutes of strangulation. D9981 was told to keep the belt in position for a further 10 minutes. D6812 recovered with mild or permanent and damages several muscular ligaments in his neck. D6812 was admitted to Site 06 Medical Ward but did not make any further recovery. Dang, Emily Young seems to really like torturing whoever this 1190 is. Anyway, September 15th, 2020. Experimenter was Dr. Emily Young. Subject was 1190. Procedure. The 1190 was placed in a vacuum sealed container from which the air was ventilated. Hmm. <sighs> Results, D1190 began to asphyxiate several minutes into the test, visibly struggling for air and collapsed against the wall of the chamber after less than a minute, remaining conscious. Subject was left overnight, after which air was released back into the chamber. D1190 was admitted to the, the Site 06 X Medical Ward with acute cerebral hypoxia and burst blood vessels in the eyes. Subject physically recovered within three days, but remained in a vegetative state for several weeks. Upon awakening, D11 night, and the display symptoms of permanently impaired motor and speech skills, as well as widespread paralysis. November 2nd, 2020. One month after waking up, D1190 has not shown any- Oh, sorry. One month after waking up, D1190 has not shown any signs of further re recovery. It appears that the anomalous nature of the healing effect extends only to fatal injuries or ailments. D1190 remains effectively useless as D-Quest. Under usual circumstances, I'd recommend termination. A note from the Karen. Also known as Dr. Emily Young. I'm giving her an increasingly more annoying voice. I hope you enjoy. Experiment Log 4 Date September 17th, 2020. Experimenter Dr. Emily Young. Subject D8833. Procedure D8833 
the 8833 had cuts made on her wrists and ankles over the course of six hours, was strained of an estimated 80% of her, her blood. Removed blood was retained and reintroduced into, bo into the body in the following day via in intravenous a strip. In much the same manner of the, as the previous experiment, the 8833 was successfully resurrected, but it suffered injuries consistent with prolonged loss of oxygen to the brain. In the instance, symptoms include loss of sensation in the left half of the body and loss of understanding of any subject more complex than naming animals. Note that the 8833 remained conscious despite not having a significant volume of blood. The logs continue in much the same fashion, with some unfortunate D class being exposed to whatever system that would normally kill them. Poison, starvation, explosion, whatever. You scroll down looking for one in particular. The old scroll reel oh, clicks loudly, twenty times with each movement of your finger. A series of loud clicks that echoed through the silence of the library. You stop at experiment ten. <sighs> Experiment Log 10 Date October 11th, 2020 Experimenter Dr. Emily Young Subject The 11,424 The 11,424 was decapitated with a steel bladed guillotine Results Head was cleanly removed the 11,424 remained conscious during and after the operation. Efforts were made to breathe, which failed, and the 11,424 began to show signs of suffocation and significant blood loss. Although the 11,424 was admitted to Site 06, ex medical ward, the injury was deemed irreparable. Both head and body were placed into cold storage. You smile, lifting your hand to touch the raised scar that forms a ring around your neck and the tiny bumps from age old stitches. Irreparable. You keep scrolling. So clearly, we are the 11 and that's the 24. Which I am going to henceforth name What should I name this one? I'll name them Bob. Experiment log twenty November fifth, twenty twenty five. Experimenter, M Dr. Emily La Young. Subject, D10,273. Procedure. One round from a single, from standard issue security handgun was fired into the forehead and of the 10,273 by Dr. Young. Results. Subjects a same major head injury and was submitted to Site 06 Medical Ward with severe brain damage and blood loss. December 28, 2025. After almost two months under medical care, the 10,273 has made a full recovery, albeit with major memory loss of both recent and earlier history. Subject remembers basic skills such as how to eat and speak, but does not recall any personal details. Experiment Log 21 The date is December 31st, 2025. The experimenter is Dr. Emily Young, who is going to be stood in by Dr. Joyce Michaels. The subject is Dr. Emily Young. Dr. Young self-administered a single bullet from the head from a security handgun, and in much the same manner as the previous as test. Results, subject sustained major head and injury, 
and was admitted to Site 06 Medical Ward. Foley had posed versus through the temporal lobe, frontal lobe, and brain stem, the latter of which appears to have disconnected Dr. Young's brain from her body. She is unable to communicate or perform any more other functions. Note. As Dr. Young is incapable of performing further research, she has been removed from the SCP-3984 research team. She will undergo a psychology, a psychological re review pending on her, her recovery. In the meantime, I will assume control of research. Dr. Joyce Michaels. Note. Dr. Young has elected to maintain a log of specific research intentions for, for each experiment. Despite this, we should have been able to narrow down on the source of immortality to the brain. Subsequent experiments should focus on this, and we consider the rest of the body to be mortal. Dr. Michaels. <sighs> Michaels isn't wrong. You've seen someone uh, in a car crash, their body mangled beyond recognition, limbs in places they shouldn't be, and blood everywhere or, or that they should, but that should be corpse. Still found the energy to call for help, to scream in pain. You don't imagine they ever stopped. Young hasn't changed much. Much sense he, his experiment. You couldn't tell whether or not she recognizes you. She recognized you. Experiment log twenty two. February second, twenty twenty six. Doctor Joyce Michaels. Subject D thirty seven three three E thirty three seventy three A. A male macaca. A mulata or what? I don't know this. Purpose to confirm or deny the above assumption. Procedure D three E seventy three A was given a standard lethal injection in dose. Standard lethal injection dose consists of injections with following substances with three minute gaps between injections. Five grams of sodium thiopental to induce unconsciousness. One hundred milligrams of pancuronium and bromide to stop breathing. Three point nine grams of potassium chloride to stop the heart. Result <sighs> Primary injection was unable to cause as 373A to become unconscious. However, its vocalizations became slower and panic-like. Exceptions were noted. Secondary injection saw widespread muscular relaxation and induced breathing difficulty. Tertiary injection quickly induced cardiac arrest, through which HD 373A remained conscious and visibly panicked throughout, uh, despite severe muscular relaxation. Relaxation. After 12 hours, when the administered drugs were declared to be no longer actively causing symptoms in the subject, the 373A was admitted to the 806 medical ward with acute cerebral hypoxia from the lack of blood flow. Note that the 373A remained conscious throughout the experiment. February 25th, 2026, with medical attention from Site 06, the monkey or whatever it was, I'm not sure. I think it was a monkey? It sounds like some sort of scientific name, you know? 
That's made a full recovery with no permanent side effects. It is interesting to observe that sedation was, not, was unable to induce unconsciousness in the subject. It might not... Uh, it might be not that the brain is immortal, but that it's impossible to cause one to become unconscious. Date. February 7th, 2026. Experimenter is, is still Michaels. Subject. D-37-4A. A female macaca... Milata. I'm gonna look that up. I'm kind of tired of this. Jeez. Let's just Google what this is first. Because I'm kind of curious. Oh, yeah, it is a monkey. Okay. So they're doing experiments on monkeys now. Purpose, to confirm or deny the above of assumption that it is not possible to cause the brain to become unconscious. Procedure, over the course of five days, the second monkey was injected with a mild sedative, a strong sedative, a mild local anesthetic, a mild general anesthetic, and class SC amnestics. Results. This monkey responded positively to the mild sedative, thus as much as its efficient cost sleep. Local and general anesthetic and amnesics. This, this monkey had no response to the strong sedative. In fact, no effect of the sedative was observed, despite this weak sedative showing a positive drowsiness of response. Note. Sedation, at least to the point of unconsciousness, is not an option for future experiments. This supports the above assumption. Dr. Michaels. Experiment Log 24. February 19, 2026. I find it really interesting that they decided to do monkeys after they did human experimentation. Experimenter. Dr. Joyce Michaels. Subject. Yet another monkey. The third monkey. Purpose. To establish if the effects of SCP-3984 hold even when the brain no longer conventionally exists. <sighs> Procedure. After being in restrained, the skull of uh, this monkey was surgically opened from the top down to the neck. Connection to the spinal cord column was severed, and the brain was removed as damage to neurons and other the brain cells are not at risk. The a brain was separated into individual cells through combination of chemical disaggregation as, 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 as and mechanical trick. Iteration. They blended it. Individual cells were suspended in a saline in solution. The resulting mixture, referred to as solution 398424, was placed through a series of tests to determine its electrical activity.
results. Electrical signals persisted throughout the brain cells, suspended in solution as would be expected for it. Or a healthy human brain. Despite this, it was not possible to determine whether or not a, this monkey remained conscious as an MRI scan was inconclusive on account of the not brain in shape nature of the solution and randomization of cell locations. Samples of F3984-24 are available on re, upon request. You've seen enough test logs. None of them contain the information you're looking for. You know that at some point, and they'll be you one when or they reconnect Bob's severed head. But beyond that, none of them interest you. You scroll all right down to the bottom of the page. Summary of research: Through research orchestrated by Dr. Young and Dr. Michaels, overall SCP-3984 can be characterized by an inability for the brain to become unconscious. The current theory proposes that, that SCP-3984 does not re represent immortality as such, but rather an in inability to lose for the brain to lose function. The amount of function is not retained so long as the brain in itself remains operable. See Experiment 3. Then we have this. And acts as a night part. <sighs> Frick, you knew you'd never be able to get as deep as you needed to. Level 5 access? That's 05 impersonation. Impossible. What were you thinking? The communicator illuminates your face, and you're suddenly keenly acutely aware that you are the most visible object in the room. The silence feels so loud. There's something stirring in the darkness. There are shapes all around you. People. Barely visible. Clad and in black. Guns raised point at you. Two of them. Four. No, six. When you can count. Yeah, it's more than six. Slowly advancing. You drop down and crash behind the librarian's desk under the computer monitor. Your back or ice against the front one paddle. A single shot rings out, tearing through the silence. You're aware of splinters of wood flying as a bullet. It tears through the desk. Something shoots out of your chest, right in the middle. Your breath stops. The black figure comes around. The black figures come around the back of the librarian's desk from both sides. They converge closer and closer. It's now that you wish you could die. So that is the second story of the SCP End of Death. This was SCP 3984. I hope you enjoyed. Please, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment below. I'll see you next time when I'm doing this again.